Ian Lobas helps successful men reignite their marriage and become irreplaceable husbands, fathers, and leaders. He is the host of the Irreplaceable Man podcast. He's a men's relationship and marriage coach, founder of the Irreplaceable Man Coaching and Mastermind. And Ian is so well revered for creating systems and formulas that help men better their lives. Ian, it is a pleasure to have you on the Couply Relationship Advice Podcast. Thanks so much, man. I've been looking forward to this for so long. We've had it off and on for a while, but we finally, we finally got it in. I'm really, really happy we're recording this. We've got so much alignment just personally in the things that we do. So I'm really, really excited to share your story with our community and introduce you to the community and have them learn from you. You've got so much awesome stuff here. Thanks, I'm man. excited to dig in. Me too. So let's, let's do it. I'm an open book. So uh, you ask anything, I answer it. So how did you start off into this space and let people know just a little bit more about your story? Sure. So into the coaching space? Into the, into the men's coaching space to coach men yeah. into becoming better husbands. Irreplaceable. Yeah, the, Irreplaceable. The, a lot of which your audience is going through, I was focused on my job, my business, and what I thought was my value to the world, which is providing, right? Monetary value, which became my human value. And I, I ran that for so long until, you know, my business was very successful and my wife said, I can't go on like this. Like you're not present at home. You're giving everybody your best, but you're bringing home like the scraps of you. You know, when you're out there to everybody else, you're, you're charismatic, you're personable, but you come home and you're angry and you know, I can't talk to you and our communication's terrible and like I'm starting to not trust you and I'm out. And I was like, out, out, like I just went through all this personal development. I'm not, I, I didn't change. And she's like, well, you changed for everybody else, but at home, I don't see it. And if you don't make the changes necessary in you, I, I'm gonna, I have to leave. And it got to the point where she was like, I'm done, I'm out. And my daughter was, was one. And it scared me so much because I realized how inauthentic I was being. I realized how misaligned I was driving after all this money and the financial you know, status and success and that kind of thing to justify my value, I was literally leaving behind the exact people that I was working for. And at that moment, I kind of, in my, in my egotistical brain was like, man, she can roll. Like, I'll just give her a bunch of money. I can just make more money. Like, she can roll. And I called one of my coaches and uh, mentors at the time. And I said, here's what's going on. You know, what do you think I should do? You think I should roll? And he said, dude, let me tell you what it looks like and feels like to be replaced. And I was like, and my, dude, my gut, my gut felt it and my heart sank. And he goes, I've been married four times, been replaced by every wife because I show up as the man that I think I'm supposed to be, but not the man that she needs me to be. And it's not about changing who you are for somebody else. It's about being the authentic, real version of you to the people that you love and care about the most. And so he gave me this story, and I tell this on a lot of podcasts, where he goes, you know, imagine you pull up to a house and there's cars in the driveway that you're paying for, most likely, because that was your commitment in the relationship, and a house that you're probably paying for because that was your commitment. And you walk up to the door, and you knock on the door, and this guy answers. And you go, oh, hey, you know, Mike, uh, are my kids there, right? And he goes, yeah, hey, uh, come on down, guys, your dad's here. And they say hi to him before they say, or say bye to him before they say hi to you. And while you're walking down the stairs, what will you feel when you know for a fact that you hurt your children and you hurt your wife because you weren't man enough to take it on, the work, the challenge, digging into your psyche, your traumas, working on yourself, that you didn't commit to the work on you needed to save your relationship. What will you feel like? And I'm like, oh my God, I never thought about it like that. And he goes, dude, just think about it. When you're 75 years old, you'll think about that. When your kids are 25, they'll ask you, like, what happened to you and mom? And you'll say to them, well, you know, yeah, mom and I just didn't work out. You know, we just, you know, irreconcilable, which is BS. But in your heart, you'll know, and they'll know that you didn't give it everything you had. And I was like, oh my God, I, I, I don't want to be replaced. And he was like, then you better make some changes now. And so I dedicated my, my, my life to becoming an irreplaceable man and husband that my wife would never want to leave. 
But what does that look like? Well, I set, I set that goal and I, and I set to find out what that meant. And subsequently, um, obsessively, because I was driven by fear of losing my wife um, and making this massive uh, choice that would end in so much lifelong regret, generational regret, frankly, and resentment, that it, like all the exercises and the things that I've built for my curriculum, like it drove me and then I just started helping other men out. As I was getting traction, I started helping other men. So that's kind of my story in a nutshell of how this thing kicked off and how I got to where I am today. A, a lot that I want to dig into there, and I'm going to bring sure. like s- certain things up as we go. But I think you've touched on something which is a favorite theme of mine. Um, this idea around like being successful and being able to be successful in the business world, and then it yeah. not equating to being successful in your home life why can't the skills and attributes that make you successful in business why can't they directly one-to-one match for being successful in a relationship yeah I get that question all the time they're not transferable because you're dealing with different contexts right you're dealing with with you do these things out over here your negotiation skills or your sales skills or your tech skills or whatever to get a an outcome which is rapidly delivered to you. You do this work, you get this reward, a paycheck. You do this work, you get this reward, over and over and over, and we're conditioned that way. That in our relationship, one, you're not dealing with the numbers and the math of a business, even the human components. You're not dealing with something that's really at stake. Even the human components in your business, there's not enough at stake there to really drive you to do the work on you. Now, your employees might quit or they might hate you or they talk behind your back, but your wife will decimate your life. Your children not, not being there with you will decimate your life. I don't care how tough guys think they are, I'll well, screw my wife, you know, whatever. You're feeling that. And so they're not transferable because you're dealing with completely different contexts. Like you can't negotiate a $10 million deal. I used to think about this, I'm like, I can negotiate high level real estate deals, but I can't negotiate for sex with my wife. I can't negotiate for doing dishes. I can't, I can't why am I, what, what's the problem? And it, the answer is, you are a certain avatar at work, and yet you are a completely different avatar at home. Needed to be, right? You can't be the hard-charging, driving entrepreneur at, at home that you are at work, and you can't be the soft and you know, maybe um, uh, compassionate at work all the time. So it's a very different person that actually has to show up there. You know, one of the things that um, a lot of tech companies did back in the day was this idea of like radical candor, and it was this idea of like giving feedback um yeah. and we had it in our company for a while and it was tough like i, I wasn't used to it i, I wasn't used yeah. to this sort of um experience of going out and giving a pitch and then you finish the pitch and then your manager sits down and was like okay you said too many ums you said like four times you waved right. your arms around and it was awkward and and this culture of radical candor in a business um was something that i thought i could bring into my previous relationship let me tell you ian that went down like a shit sandwich my friend Uh, (laughs) critiquing your critiquing your spouse wasn't what didn't work out for you in a super blunt like radical kind of way and i thought it was so cool because it was like i was working for a successful tech company and like my boss did it so well and it did help me improve and it was just like uh really bad but i've seen i've seen people i've seen people try and and bring it up as if it can be used in a relationship. And I remember just thinking yeah. like, ah, good luck guys. Good, good luck. You know, there's, go on. You know what, you know what it can be used though? Twofold. One, when you have the foundation that can support it, right? You have really mm. clear and open communication and trust in that communication present. Trust with emotional trust present. Um, reliability trust present. By the way, there's six different trust types. Uh, those are just three. And, um, and on the other side, like when you become the man that can actually communicate effectively and directly and, be, and have that information accepted, that's what can happen. But when you show up with this new set of skills as the same guy, there's only so far that can go, right? Like yeah. you can't show up to a new job with the same set of skills and the job takes in a completely different input. You can't, it's not gonna work out too well. And it's the same thing with the human. You can't just take what you learn at work because it's effective and apply it to your marriage because you're not that guy in your marriage yet. You have to become him. 
And you're totally right as well. It really depends on like the level of trust and quality that you have in that relationship and the foundation yeah. that you've built. And I think at the time when I was yeah. doing this, those found those foundations <laughs> were a bit wobbly. It definitely, yeah. definitely wasn't. It definitely wasn't the the time of the place to to be like to be doing these to be doing these communication techniques and one of the many many things that um looking back only now 10 years later i was like oh that was a stupid thing um <laughs> what is it what is it that you think that is the one big thing that men really get lost on on relationships what is the thing they don't understand they don't understand their wives and really they don't understand themselves like that's like you started the foundation if you don't understand yourself enough your traumas, your triggers, uh, your communication style authentically. If you don't understand you, you can't understand another person because you don't know the you don't know what it takes to actually understand somebody fully. You have to understand yourself first. And subsequently, they don't understand their wives or what their wives actually need. And they're not creating space for their wives to share that information. And so yeah. starting with your own personal growth, like your relationship will grow to the extent that you do, just like your business will, mm -hmm. just like anything will. Your relationship grows to the extent that you do. So if you're not growing, your relationship's not gonna grow. It might blip up. You might be able to hustle it, but I mean, when's the last time you said someone, you heard from someone that they crushed their marriage or they're crushing their marriage or that they, they like <laughs> crushing hustled Q1 so hard of my this marriage. Weekend. Dude, my marriage in Q1 is crushed, man. I nailed my goals, <laughs> radically exceeded them. I hustled the shit out of my marriage and it's amazing. Like that does not happen like that. So th that's the difference again in the separation between your, your professional life and your personal life is, is marriage takes work. You gotta really dig into yourself. You gotta become the man that can have the marriage that you dream about. I hear guys all the time that come through my programs or they'll DM me and go, hey man, my wife still doesn't love me, doesn't wanna have sex with me, doesn't wanna be with me. We just went through six months of, months of marriage counseling or therapy, to couples therapy, and I go, okay, well, what would that do for you? Well, clearly it didn't do anything. Well, why'd you go there? Well, because we thought it would fix our marriage. And I go, well, what about you as the individual components that make up the marriage? Do you work on you? No. What did you work on? Well, we worked on ways we could talk to each other about money or sex. I'm like, cool. Well, what about your skills to be able to speak in a way that your partner will receive or not be intimidated by or feel like they're safe to share with you? Oh, we didn't work on those. Okay, well, but we're going to work on those together. You decide to be one of my programs. Like, We're going to work on the foundational base level skills and habits and mindset that you need to become the man who can get the results that you want for your marriage. Right, it's that formulaic. That's why everything I do is a formula, like you mentioned in the intro. Ah, oh, so I know. What is the formula for this one, Ian? I want to bug you for these formulas because I mean, <laughs> I'm a huge fan of this, and I haven't really seen it anywhere else. I know it's something that you've really built yourself, but I think yeah. it really speaks to, I think it really speaks well to, a lot of men that that need a different kind of help. And I think yeah. I could be biased here, but I think it's pretty well documented <laughs> that because a lot of the therapy space is mostly female led, then we're using sort of a lot of techniques that speak really well to females. But I think sure. that men might be um, less catered to. And, and this is like a little bit of conjecture, but we're on a podcast, we're having yeah. fun here. And that's yeah. why I think these formulas speak so well to men because men by their nature are very solution focused. Yeah. Give me a lever, give me a formula so I understand it to yeah. my core. So. I want to, I want some of these formulas, dude. <laughs> I'm going to put this out there. One day, my formulas will be inside of the coupley world. <laughs> Amazing. You just, all you audience, you stay tuned. Um, <laughs> oh, dude, there's so, there's so much synergy there. We're going to, we're going to do something cool. Um, so one of the reasons why I started building formulas was because I didn't trust my own emotions or even understand them for mm -hmm. that matter. And so when I would think that I was winning with my wife or that I did something right, which, you know, winning and right, like it, you're talking about a marriage, yeah. it's not a business, right? Yeah. I was like, okay, there is something that's transferable from my business, which is in business, I use formulas and metrics to keep emotion out. Like, I don't feel like I'm advancing in my business. I know because of the metrics. So I asked a bunch of coaches at that time that I was coaching with, how to, or coaching me, how do you measure personal growth? And they're like, you can't, it's intrinsic, it's in you, it's a feeling, and I'm like, not really because the feeling of being terrified that you can't pay your mortgage one month and that your house is gonna get in foreclosure and your car's gonna get repoed and your wife's gonna leave, like if all of a sudden 
you open your phone and it says, congratulations, your bank account's now $5 million more and it's real and the taxes have been paid. I guarantee 100% accuracy, you would not feel the same way you did five seconds before that. So we can't trust our feelings because they're externally driven and motivated. Plus we don't understand our feelings because most guys don't understand their traumas or their past conditions enough to really understand what fuel source is driving their emotions and subsequently their decisions. So I set out on this mission to start building formulas to gauge my progress of internal growth and development of me, the human. And the first one we started out with was this, I call it the purpose-driven formula. It's illuminate plus eliminate plus calibrate equals acceleration, which means you can't hustle and grind your marriage. You have to let acceleration happen naturally. So if we, if we illuminate what's working, what's not working, and what's missing from a relationship, we illuminate what we truly want and what our wives truly want. We also illuminate what we have and what they have currently. We now have a gap to work between what we want and what we have. And then we get into the next phase, which is the elimination phase of eliminating the things we don't want, eliminating the skills, habits, mindset, that kind of thing that don't work anymore. And then we start to understand in the, in the third phase how to calibrate in what we do need or who we need to be or what skills and habits we need or what mindset or what language pattern that we need to actually get the result that we want. And the acceleration piece is the result you want. You'll get acceleration and momentum by using the formula because if, if you said to me, I want this from my marriage, and I said, cool, well, what are you currently doing that's not working? And you said, these three things for a fact I know, because my wife tells mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. if I came back to you in a month and said, what are your results today? And you're like, Oh, they're no better. And I said, well, cool, what are those three things? You still doing those? Yeah, I'm still doing those. Well, those inputs will never change the output. So we have to start by changing the input. And the other reason I did it was because I was overwhelmed by the psychology and the physiology yeah. and the autonomic nervous system and the brain wiring and chemistry. And this, I found it to be this huge undertaking. And so I wanted to understand, like, there's not like 50,000, you know, bajillion different variables. It's mm -hmm. just run the formula to test and see the result. Okay, I didn't get the result. Cool, well, what components inside the formula need to change? These two, got it. Change those, rerun the formula. And if the answer is, but I don't know how to change those, then that's the work that you pinpoint focus on. You don't just go read a personal development book that's 300 pages long and go, oh, I got so much out of it. You go, me, my life, my results that I want, my marriage, these two components need to change. So now I'm gonna seek out the resources and the people or the podcasts or whatever to help me with these two components. Now when I get help with those two components and I input those new components or the shifted or evolved components in, I will 100% see a different result. And so instead of it being in personal development and just in, you know, info addicting every single thing I could do, I figured out what exactly I needed to start tweaking and changing to rerun my formula to see the results change. Now, yes, you could argue that like, you know, my wife still has a say in all that and she has an attitude and she has traumas, so everything's not as predictable. I guarantee you though, I mean, I've taken thousands of men through this, that when you run the formula and you start to test, that your conclusions will be 80% better. You leave 20% for like the other person's stuff. And then, you know, you step up, we have our, our life formula and we have a lot of other formulas that people use because if you leave it to like wide open, you're going to get overwhelmed. And that's when you hear people go, I've been working on myself for 20 years. And they go, yeah, how's your life? And they go, it's better. It gets better every day. And I'm like, well, do you have what you want? Do you have the marriage and the body and the money and the, well, no, not exactly. I'm like, cool, well, what are you working on? And they're just working on things. Yet I want people to get traction quickly. So the formulas help you get traction quickly by pinpointing exactly where to work. And then as you run the formula, it'll open up new areas. And not only will it open up new areas to get the result that you're looking for, it will also start to develop a habit that you don't go for everything when you want to change or evolve. You pinpoint. So now you have a habit of stopping yourself from getting emotional of like, oh, fuck, this isn't working, to I know it's not working. It's pinpointed. I'm gonna go change that one thing and rerun the formula and see what results I get. And then you just keep doing that. How do people have that first illumination conversation with their partner? It's just, it's just it's questions, it's being curious. You know, you come from a place of curiosity instead of blame. So you're using I statements instead of you statements. 
you always do this, you never do this, you're gonna put your partner on the defensive. In your formula, you've just illuminated what's not working, right? Change it, okay, cool. Well, I'm gonna tweak you statements to I statements. Hey, I feel this way when this happens. I feel like this or I, I, um, I, this registers in me when this happens between us. You have a very different conversation just based on that small tweak, which is awesome. And so it starts with a line of questions. And from those questions, you'll get data. And from that data, you'll plug that into the formula and then you run the formula, right? It's all math, mm. all math. Because mm -hmm. if you don't have data and you have, I feel like my wife trusts me, I feel like my communication's good, it's not data. That's oh, yeah. feelings and thoughts, yeah. Ye a thousand percent, and you're, you're touching on something that, as you know, I'm so passionate about. This is why we mm -hmm. built these quizzes in Coupley, right? Because we yeah. really wanted to give people a score. So like building yeah. trust, you do the building trust uh, course in Coupley, you're getting a score at the end of that. It's like the score yes. of how much your partner trusts you in a percentage number. Yeah. A score of yeah. your trust in your par partner in a percentage number. Is it going to generate a slightly difficult conversation. Perhaps, is it a needed conversation? <laughs> you bet, you bet it's a needed conversation. And guess what? When people's words lead to actions, that builds trust. That's why we have three of the courses. So you can do the first one, if it's a little bit low, yep. it's gonna increase in the second one, and hopefully increase in the third one. I yep. love this, I really love this, and I feel like you do such a great job of surfing sort of psychological and therapeutic methods yep. alongside with this quite hard-nosed analytical and performance-driven look at things, right? Because it's not often that you hear it's important to like hold space. A lot of people don't know what yeah. hold space means. So that, that's right. not, that can be right. a buzzword. Um, like acknowledge your traumas. Again, some people don't know what that is, but you are damn straight. Everyone knows the things that they do yeah. that are problematic and that they don't want to address, right? Yeah. So like, yeah. it's it's sort of like, it, it, it's a very neat dance that I, I, one of those things that you do so well that I really love is that blending both things, but it, it's performance driven. Like you are yeah. really focused on that actual, the bottom line, like the actual change. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's a, um, I became, so, I'm an OCD guy, right? And mm. an ADHD to the max. And I really wanted to use both of those things as benefits and power, not detriments. And I think mm. when people have OCD and they're like washing their hands or locking their car 50 times or whatever it might be, or touching a doorknob six times before they open it, whatever, that can be channeled. And so I just figured out a way, I studied psychology really deeply and I figured out ways to channel the, the obsession from locking my car 50 times to, <laughs> or turning the stove off 30 times, you know, whatever it might be, to, yeah. um, to an obsession about how to mix these two things together. And it is true, it is psychology, it's, um, uh, you know, it's intrinsic, it's esoteric, yet it's also math. And the directness comes from the math. No one can argue Unless you're like one of those people that like thinks that dinosaurs aren't real, like that goes by that kind of like wacky theory. Which, hey, listen, if you are, you're cool, but probably not coachable. So this really might not be a conversation for you necessarily. Um, or if like you don't believe in like math or something, like one plus one, I feel like it might equal like two and a half because you know like the there's a principle from like no no eight equals two right because one thing and one thing equals two. That's it. So we go with the absolute of math, and then we have the unpredictability of the brain and trauma. And when you pair those two things together, you can get somewhere pretty quick. So a lot of my stuff, all of my stuff, frankly, is very psychological driven and derived. It's based off of concepts like cognitive behavioral therapy or childhood trauma clearing. It's injected in there, but it's like the broccoli covered or chocolate covered broccoli. Like I'm not gonna go, hey, do you wanna <laughs> learn about your childhood trauma? Click this link, right? It's, yeah. It, it's, it's chocolate covered and it's embedded in there and it's, and it's you won't know that it's being done, but it's being done. And then there's a directness of the formula of the math problem that's, if your formula didn't work, then you go back to the formula. You don't go, I'm stupid, or I can't do this, or my wife's a bitch. You don't do that. You, you just go back to the formula because if you get driven by the emotion, you're just going off course again. The, yeah. the, 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 the math problem keeps you on course because for me as a accountability partner of yours, 
If I check in and go, cool, did you run those two new things? Did you read that little article I sent you on this? Did you implement into the formula? And you go, no. And I go, well, what's your result look like? It's the same. And I go, cool. Well, when you do that, you'll get a different result. There's also a psychological, you know, um, um, like forward, forward vision or, or projection based model there too, which is now the brain is being trained that something different will come. And so you're yeah. automatically locked on that. It's very psychological at that point and unconscious that I do this, I will get a different result versus the old mentality, which is, well, I'll read this book and hopefully my marriage changes or, hey, I'll, um, I'll just tell my wife what I'm fearful of or that I'll cry in front of her and it'll just change my marriage or I'll show up every night at 6 p.m. because that's what she wants and my whole marriage will be different. It doesn't work like that. It has to be clearly defined so you can measure it. And so that's why I think for and, and I'm really surprised that more people don't. But again, it, there is a level of craziness and obsession that it takes to build stuff like this and to stay in it and have that mix. So I love when guys are like, oh, my God, dude, I thought like guys will complain to me and go, hey, your exercises are too easy. And they go, well, what, are you, what are you looking for? <laughs> and you want me to make you cry on everyone? And they go, no, but I thought it was going to be a little harder than this. I'm like, why don't you just try it and see what happens? And then they start trying it and running it. And they're like, my God, it works. Like my wife started talking to me again and like opened up to me for the first time in two years. And they go, yeah, because you became the man that opened a space for her that she could trust her emotions with. And because you built reliability trust, which is one of the other trusts, because you built reliability trust and competency trust with her over the last two weeks, she gave you another side of her or another level of her. Now you got to stay on that and you'll get exactly what you want. So do you have a different result from running that formula, making those tweaks? 100% trackable, measurable. Yep. Great. Keep doing that. Now here's the third component we're going to add in. And the guy's like, oh, dude, I believe in this now. I think this works. It's not I feel, it's I, it works because I'm seeing the proof. of I do this, I get this, right? It goes back to our business conversation. I do this work, I get this paycheck. Cool. So what about my marriage? Well, it's not gaugeable. It's not trackable. Yet with a formula it is. So when you do these three things, my wife has sex with me more than once a month. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Okay, I'm gonna do those three things. I'll stay consistent with those. Oh, cool, I'm building this. Oh, great. Like, that's how it works. And I, it, dude, I don't know if there's anything more exciting to me in life than like teaching guys about the way that I think you should run personal development and growth and especially relationship stuff and seeing it work. And it's like not the most monumental, mind blowing, crazy thing, it's the most simplistic, foundational reset. And it works, and it's it's so exciting to me. It, with the emulation, uh, elimination part of this, this is yeah. where it is a little bit of that. You're starting to bite into the broccoli that's underneath the chocolate, yeah. Um, yeah. and this is where actually probably some of those like psychological principles come into play. Because as you start to look at the reason why perhaps men tend to shut down or can't hold space for their partner's emotions, which I'd love for you to just like talk a little bit about what that truly means because that is a bit of a buzzy word that I think 99% of people that are using coupling means like what the frick does holding space mean like I don't right. know what that means so right even just yeah. even just giving people a definition of that would be really good but I want to know as well is like what is the broccoli that you see the most yeah. from your from your um, male clients I mean how many guys can you get on the phone who who I just immediately go Hey, so can you tell me about what your parents did to damage you in your childhood? And they go, nothing really. I don't really have that. You know, my parents were great. It was a great childhood. I didn't really get bullied. I was good in sports. I'm like, cool. You can't go that route. It has to be formulaic, right? It has to, there has to be a, uh, a set of components that equals something. And so when you're speaking with a guy, first you've got to prime that pump, right? You can't just start pumping. Like, you've got to prime that pump with other questions. And then... Mm -hmm. The, the next step, like what you're asking for is you, you start to understand and record, hey man, over the next two weeks, the homework is every time you get emotional with your wife, document what she did, right? And in, the, and in two weeks, we're gonna see patterns. And then when you bring those patterns back to me, I'm gonna ask you some questions about the pattern, right? I'm not gonna ask you about the argument you have with your wife because that's too big. I'm going to ask you about that, th that pattern that showed up six out of eight times. And when I ask you questions about that pattern and where it came from, you're going to pinpoint your trauma instantly. And you're going to go, and you're going to be like, no, that can't be it. 
And there's a difference between trauma, big T trauma, and little T trauma. You know, big T trauma is like you saw someone get murdered or like, you know, your, your a parent died early in your childhood or they divorced or something. But there's little T traumas that are, uh, that are like, you know, one day your mom took a toy away from you, gave it to your little brother, and instantly your brain said, he, other people are more valuable than me, I'm not lovable, I have to fight for my mom's love, and now all of a sudden in your relationship today, you're constantly fighting for approval and appreciation and love from your wife, right? And so when we can pinpoint little things or even big things that happened to you in your past based on the patterns that are coming up in your current relationship and how you're actually operating unconsciously, we can solve those things very quickly. Wow, very yeah. cool, very yeah. cool. Simple, and, you gotta keep, gotta keep and, personal development simple. And I think because it's in the formula, right, you don't, pe yeah. people get obsessed with being in the storm. The, some people call it the dance steps. Those dance steps are the same patterns that they, that they're the same argument type that they have over and over again. Other people call it a storm where you sort of don't know which way is up, you don't know which way your relationship is going. But when you're in that, it feels like a repeating thing. It's like every day is Groundhog Day yeah. and you, no matter what you try and do, the pattern seems to emerge again. You get into the same argument and you everything gets a little bit worse. That trust is eroded a little bit more. The foundations eroded a little bit more. So knowing that in that second part of the formula, okay, now we've got to eliminate this. Now we've got to eliminate this. Right. Try this differently and it will lead to that outcome. I think, like you say, gives people just a breath of being like, okay, it's not rocket science here. We've got to change, no. just keep focus on changing these inputs because therapy is so big and there's so Too many big. different boogeymen out there, right? There's so many different things yeah. that we can blame it on, especially when you're yeah. in a relationship with another person. So that, keeping it simple, like you say, very yeah yeah very very cool and the other thing is um most of this is going to be in the illumination or calibration phase the illumination phase like well, our mastermind is pretty much you know 60 percent of it's in the illumination phase and it's very little bit the elimination phase because the illumin the elimination happens in like in a moment so if you illuminate this vicious cycle right by illuminating the patterns and you understand that when my wife said, like when my wife says, you always do this or you never do this, I freak out, right? It, yeah. it triggers me. Yeah, me and too. so, <laughs> right? <laughs> the, the, that's illumination, right? The, 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 the patterning and the documentation of the pattern is the illumination. That's the work. The elimination is, okay, so when I react like this, it triggers her like that. Okay, so mm -hmm. the elimination is the next time my wife triggers me, I'm not gonna react. I'm gonna stay quiet. That alone is a massive difference, a massive mm -hmm. difference. So you don't have to like, you don't have to do all of these different things. You just don't say that again, because every time you do this, this is the result. So if that's the pattern and this is your repetition, then stop that repetition, eliminate it, and then see what happens, right? That, then rerun the formula. And the guys will go, but what can I do differently? And I go, stopping something is differently, right? Just because it's the absence of something doesn't mean it's not something. And so when you illuminate what's working and what's not working by understanding the patterning or understanding what keeps coming up and how it keeps getting triggered, the same old result, and you eliminate the one aspect and you rerun it and you get a different result, the calibration phase is the next thing, which is, okay, so I saw the patterns, I eliminated that reaction, my wife's reacting differently, our arguments don't end in a battle or me sleeping on the couch, and okay, what can I do now? because we're forward progressing, right? The, the brain's plastic, right? That's what neuroplasticity is. So you can trust that the brain's gonna change. It wants to change. It just has that wiring to keep you safe, just, just like innately, right? That's the, that's the amygdala. So now the calibration phase becomes, let me test this one component. Instead of freaking out on her, let me say, hey, um, why is it that you always blame me or consistently say I always or never do this? I'd like to understand that more because I don't want to have these fights anymore. I want to eliminate this. So now your calibration is one question, rerun the formula. Oh shit, it works. <laughs> so now you, got, yeah. now you got an elimination phase that worked, an elimination phase that worked, a calibration phase that worked, and you instantly get a different result. And then you go, and your brain goes, pattern, repeat, pattern, repeat. So if you want to interrupt your own patterns, you don't pop a bunch of pills, you don't go to seminars, you don't read a bunch of books on 50 million things that you can do, it just start simple with one input to the computer, that, which is your brain. Your brain's a computer, right? 
And then you start to develop a habit of changing patterns, identifying patterns, changing behaviors, changing mindset, changing language to fit and get the result that you want. And then the brain sees that habit on top of that and starts to develop a habit of constantly interrupting patterning. Because, hey, 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 that pattern's not gonna work. Okay, what, what's illuminated? That pattern doesn't work. Why? Because I freak out like this every time my wife does that. Got it, what can you eliminate? The freak out, got it, what can you calibrate in? Sit down, get on your wife's level. Like, my wife and I, one of our calibrations was, like, I put my hands up and I go, hey, my sword's down, my shield's down right now. You wanna come at me? I'm unarmed. And then she'll back <laughs> yeah. off. Or because I'm yeah. a little bit more aggressive, my wife will go, hey, can we take a break? And I'll go, and I'll honor that and go, yes, we can take a break. And we go to separate rooms, separate corners, we do our thing, and then we come back and we go, okay, that clearly didn't work. What can we, count? What can we eliminate? Okay, we can eliminate the making you right or making you wrong, I'm trying to be right, you making me wrong. Let's eliminate that. What's now at P, what's present when we eliminate the being right, looking, making you wrong phase? Well, what's present is the real stuff that we gotta deal with. Okay, what's the real stuff? Well, that you're not consistently doing the dishes or the trash and I have to keep doing it and you're, you're breaking reliability trust, okay? Here's my plan to continue to be consistent with my reliability trust on the dishes and the trash. Cool. And now it's a peaceful yeah. conversation, right? And wow. so when we say, what, what, how can you create space? When you eliminate what's in the space, you now created space. Just keep it that simple, right? So if you eliminate the, the have to be right, because when you were a kid, your mom constantly made you wrong like mine did, or teachers, or literally everybody in my freaking life aside my dad made me wrong for being ADHD or a troublemaker or whatever. And when we eliminate having to make someone else wrong so I can feel important and valued and like I won the conversation, which is my old trauma. It's not real, by the way. It's not in the present moment. When you can eliminate that, now the space is clear and clean for what, whatever you want it to be. So that's how you can create space very quickly by eliminating something in the space that just doesn't work, that doesn't serve but like, here's the thing, I don't use good and bad and I don't use the words right and wrong in most cases. We substitute, we subst we, oh my God, we substitute that language, illumination, that, that language doesn't work because I, can, I could 100%, I could challenge you on good, bad, right, and wrong all, all day long, right? I can challenge you on always and never, all day. So I illuminate that there's too much variability in good, bad, right, wrong, always, never. Eliminated that, so what am I gonna do? I'm gonna eliminate the language from my, from my life, got it. What am I gonna calibrate in? I'm gonna calibrate in the words serving and non-serving. Does this behavior, does this attitude, does this mindset, does this language now serve me? Yes, okay, test the formula with, with the language of serve, not serve. Go to your wife and say, go to your wife and say, I don't believe that it serves us to argue like this and see what happens. What happened is the, 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 the offensive defensive volley is now out of the space and she goes what do you mean by that and now you can have a conversation and it's very easy <laughs> right it's so good man i guess i'm so excited about this like we can talk to you, we can talk to you for five hours about this it's so good because it's so damn simple don't overcomplicate personal growth and development the body the brain the heart the nervous system the vagus nerves the autonomic the parasympathetic it's all so complicated yet it's designed to save your life and you're in charge of it, and you can reprogram it very easily. And you don't have to go to Harvard you know, neuroscience school to be able to do that. You just have to have the right formula in place, and bam, your brain will rewire over time. And that's how people evolve very quickly. Love it. And this is, yeah. this is advanced, but it's simple. It is not, I wish it's it was advanced, this yes. easy it's advanced, to be yes. like, <laughs> You know, when you get hit with the always nevers, that, that for me, just like you say, as soon as someone hits me with an always and never, I think, well, I know that you're wrong. So that you're means wrong. I'm right. Right, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, so if, if you're saying always never, then you're wrong, and that means I'm right, and now I'm on my perch, and now I'm becoming a nightmare. So it's, it's, right. it's always a, a very... It's, I love the way that you've um, phrased this, and I'm definitely going to rewatch this and, yeah. and take that <laughs> lesson for myself. And, and, and Tim, really though, how, how hard is it? How hard is it to not say something in an argument? I mean, that's what we're talking about here. It's actually not that hard, right? If you mm -hmm. ordinarily say this and it triggers that in your wife and it gets that result, then how hard is it really to not say that? I mean, that's really what we're talking about here, which creates the space. Yeah. 
And then if you're like, well, it's really hard. Okay, well then why don't you look at your patterning? Why don't you go journal your patterning? So my question is, how hard is it for you to write down what happened and how you felt about it and, and like underline the, the, the patterning? Not that hard. Mm -hmm. Like the obsessive part of me created this, this very complex, these complex exercises and formulas and made them very easy for people to understand because when I have to hold accountability, I'm not like, okay, well, let's look at paragraph three of the third unit of the second part of the fourth, you know, exercise. No, yeah. dude, what happened? Cool. What's the story you told yourself? Got it. All right. You want to keep telling yourself that story? We're we looking to eliminate that. We're looking to eliminate that. Cool. What's the behavior behind that story? Got it. Does that show up consistently? I don't know. Go pattern it out over the next two, two, two weeks. Got it. Come back to me. Cool. Does that, batter, does that behavior pattern keep showing up? Yes. Does that reaction keep showing up? Yes. Does it get the result you want? No. Cool. Stop that. How do I stop it? By having self-discipline. Literally. <laughs> you don't need medication. You don't need to pay me more money. You don't need to get four more coaches. That's all distraction and avoidance. You have to have personal accountability that says, if I want this result and I'm willing to do whatever it takes, which by the way, you need to have the mindset of, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. And when you have right. that mindset, just, just for one time, test my theory, right? As the accountability partner and coach of yours, I'm saying, test my theory. You hired me, you're paying me, test my theory once, and just let's look at the result. 100% guaranteed the result's gonna be different. Why, how? Test it and we'll find out. I don't, dude, my feelings are in this, right? And my data's in this, but my data's not in it for you, so I need your data. All right, man, I tested it and it was, it, was, it was different. But I tested it two more times and it wasn't. I'm like, cool, but your wife's an unknown variable. We got it. You also can't tell me right now what happened to your wife that day that made her an unknown variable. And he's like, true, right? Again, true or false? There's no gray, true or false? True. How do I know that? Because I know you didn't ask her how her day was. I know you didn't make space for her to tell you because I know she doesn't trust you. Variable, Man. variable, variable, right? There's no gray, there's no guess, there's no feelings. I don't feel like your wife doesn't trust you. I know because you told me, and I know because you took my assessment, and I know that you're not asking your wife these questions to prime her to be able to share deeper. So I know your wife is not an unknown variable at this point because your wife doesn't feel heard. So now let's run the formula with what it takes for your wife to feel heard. And then let's look at those results. And now your whole formula for the argument's different. Because even if your wife comes in from a really bad day and you see that pattern in her and you have the trust present because you've been working this formula consistently, reliably, and then you say to your wife, hey, I can tell you've had a, a rough day. Would you like to talk about it? And your wife's like, no, fuck you, you don't listen to me. And you go, today I, today I am. I've changed, like today I am. So if, if you need me, I'm here for you. And bro, your wife will look at that and go, are you on drugs? Something going on here? And if you do that consistently, she will, like a turtle, she'll come out of her shell a little bit, she'll test the waters, and before you know it, in 60 days from now, 90 days from now, your relationship and the way you fight is completely different than it was 60 days before that because you've been in charge of the changes. So the last thing you have to stop doing and eliminate is blaming other people for the results that you have. It's not external, it's all internal driven. It's not the traffic, it's not the government, it's not the president, it's not your neighbor, it's not your boss, it's you. It's you, you're in charge of your formula, you set yourself up differently in the formula, you set your skills, habit, mindset, reactions, emotions, whatever, up differently, you'll get a different result. So now you become fully, fully to the self, right? You're, 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 you're self-derived, you're, you're self-reliable, you're self-accountable. And the outside world now doesn't have an effect on you, which also is a beautiful thing to not trigger your traumas anymore. So you actually reveal this irreplaceable, authentic, real version of you, the one your kids need you to be as a father, the one your wife needs you to be as a husband, and the one the world needs you to be as a man. And that's it, that's what these formulas do. They shed the armor and the shit from your past and all the ways you use to protect yourself, and they reveal, not change, they reveal the irreplaceable man that you've always been. And your whole world changes, everything changes. A lot of these things tie into these different types of trust that you've touched on, but I don't yeah. want to end this episode before we do talk about these different types of trust. Could you expand yeah. on those a little bit, please, Ian? 
Yes, as long as you promise me that you're gonna you're gonna work with me in conjunction to build a to build a really cool exercise for everybody. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> Deal. So um, uh, I, I I was running a formula and I kept getting this result that I'm like something's missing, something's missing. There's something not present here, and I and I and I clearly like I'm not seeing. I don't know what it is. So I started researching trust, and I realized that the trust I thought was the only trust you need in a relationship financial and physical, right? Maybe a little emotional. Is there's this stuff beyond that. Most guys think that, you know, well, my wife trusts me that I'm not gonna cheat on her. My wife trusts me that I'm gonna stick around. My wife trusts me with our children. My wife trusts that I'm not gonna murder her in her sleep or beat her up. My wife trusts that I'm not gonna steal the money and run to Puerto Rico. Like, it's pretty simple. Yeah, does your wife trust you? Yeah, she trusts me. But what about this whole dark corner that we haven't illuminated yet, right? So we're gonna play the formula again. So what I learned was, and again, my obsession goes to like very deep research. So I, I say it quickly, but it's like, it's, you know, it's like a lot of hours of research in here. <laughs> there's, six, there's six different types of trust, physical and financial being the first two. The next one is emotional trust. The next one is communication trust. Does your wife trust your communication? Emotional trust, does your wife trust her emotions with you? And 95% of the people listening is a no, she doesn't. So they're wondering, like, but, I, but she trusts me financially and physically, but what the hell? Like, I can't get through to her. She doesn't share. She doesn't. So now we got communication and we got emotional trust. And the last two that I was really like, shit, I didn't realize that, is reliability trust, which is the fifth one, Jeez. and a competency trust, which is the sixth one. <laughs> right? Competency. So yeah. my marriage almost ended because I wasn't doing the trash and dishes, as I said I would. So what was I breaking? Reliability and competency trust. Well, what else was I breaking? Communication trust when I argued with her. What else was I breaking? Emotional trust when I fought with her and became aggressive like verbally. What else was I breaking? Physical trust because now she felt unsafe around me. So yeah, so what? Financial trust? But guess what? When five of the six are broken, she was starting to doubt me financially. Now, they all recycle with each other and they all reciprocate with each other. So if you break financial trust, you're gonna break a bunch of, you're gonna break reliability and competency trust at the same time. You break reliability and competency trust, competency trust in your job, you're easily gonna break financial trust with your wife too, right? So you, if you break emotional trust, you've broken all of them. And the challenge is that most guys don't get enough reward from reliability trust, right? <laughs> We're gonna circle this thing back, yeah. dude. It's all patterns. Yeah. Most guys don't get enough from, reli uh, from reliability trust in terms of reward or recognition, so they don't stay as, as consistent their wife is only watching the consistency and the competency to gauge whether she can be emotionally open with you, communicate with you effectively and deeply, trust you physically and financially. So if I had some advice for anybody, it's how, what are you committed to and staying consistent with in your relationship? And it's small. It's not, will you deliver a paycheck? It's, if you say you take out the trash, will you? If you say you'll be home at 6.30, are you, right? And so, yeah. Also, don't commit to things that you're not capable of, 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 of delivering, which is competency trust. So the feminine energy in your wife is gauging you on all six at all times. All six at all times. I have a really cool exercise, exercise called the six trust types that takes you through to understand the six and then has a, a series of questions you can ask yourself. And so like, there are so many tools out there that people can use just between you and I alone they literally don't need anything else out there. We're so detailed in how we can help. I'm telling you, like, it's a pitch for you and I, but like, we're so detailed in how we can help that they don't need to go out and do a bunch of different things. That's escape, that's avoidance, that's cope. So if you, if you find mentors and coaches, leaders, you know, whatever, guides like Tim and I that, that are really effective, very committed, extremely consistent, deep level, understand this thing and are applying it, you just stick there for a bit, and maybe we help you through the next phase and the next two phases, or we help you for life. Like, you just got to find something that really works and resonates with you, and then follow the steps consistently. I think this is so cool. This six, this six types of trust is super yeah. powerful. I think the reliability competency trust is not something that's widely spoken about enough. And it yeah. is these core bonds that glue you together. When you were describing it, I was almost imagining <clears throat> like a spider's web in which yeah. like it's, it's your relationship is the web. And if these trust things are broken, the whole relationship is going to go weird. But there's probably that 
big thread where if that's gone, it's smoked. Yeah. Yeah. I think I was talking to my uh, girlfriend yesterday. We were having like, we, I asked her like, hey, do you think, where do you think we're at with the, the chores? Like, are you happy with where we're at? And she's like, yeah, you, you do great. I was like, awesome. But where would, where do you think we are in terms of like, who does, does someone do more and does someone do slightly less? Yeah. And she was like, is that a joke? And I, I was, and I had a number in my <laughs> head and I was like, okay, what percentage do you think we're at? And she was like, like, babe, you are all, if I asked you to do something, you are on it. You are on it. You will do it. Yeah. She's like, but she's like, y- you are not at my level, dude. You are not at my level. In terms, of the, in terms of the chores <laughs> yeah. and I was like okay well what's the what's the split and I was really I thought she is really good at like at just thinking of things that was like outside of my my scope of mind and it's horribly cliche to say it I hate myself for saying it but it's just things really... like it's just things like the I'll, I'll look and I was like the room looks different why does it look different she's like clean the baseboards and I was like oh god I need oh, to get shit. that on my list Need to, yeah. need to, need to, yeah. need to, need to think that. But in my head, I was like, I, I reckon, I reckon I'm at sixty forty. She's at sixty. I'm at, I'm at, I'm at forty. And and I, 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 and I was like, what do you have? And I was really hoping that we'd be matched. And she was like, seventy thirty. So she was yeah. like seventy thirty. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. But it sparked the, con- I, it sparked the conversation. And I was like, okay, I want to get that as close as I bloody can to 50 50. Yeah, um, yeah. And it's, we, we do it in a playful way. We, we have like a, she knows that my intentions are good. Um, <laughs> now she started to just be like, Oh, here's another like little 5 percenter. There's another little right. 5%. And it is, um, it's, it's bringing light to this, uh, competency trust, I guess, of just yeah. being on it with the house stuff. And it sounds so small and it is, but like our life are mostly made of yeah. these small moments, but she, she she knows I'm I'm here for it and I'm up for it, but there's there's a gap there's a gap that we have. Dude, I can tell you right now that divorces happen because reliable. Like if you think about a ten year period, mm. and don't let me forget, I want to recommend a book to you. If you think about a ten year period, when guys come to me and they go, my wife left, and she's not talking to me, or she put a VPO in place, I can't talk to her or my kids. What did I do so wrong? I've been working and providing, and and I go, dude, well let's look at the small stuff. Because if you are constantly saying, I'm going to do this and not doing it, or you are constantly eroding the competency trust, doing stuff you know, at, at, a, at a low level and, or not completing tasks, your marriage might be over because you, you've eroded or, and or never built reliability and competency trust alone ever in your, in your marriage. Or every day your wife's standing there at a chalkboard like this at the end of the day and she goes, can't count on them, can't count on them. Now, when you break financial or physical, yes, that might be the last straw, but I can tell you right now that it is the small things that break the relationship. Like marriages don't have to end because of infidelity. They end because of reliability and competency. They, they end because of emotional trust. When someone doesn't feel safe to share themselves and they feel all bottled up, they're gonna, they're gonna end the relationship with you because over time you have proven yourself and like guys will say like, I'm begging my wife to come back. Like I've done everything and, and I told her I'm gonna change. But you just proved to her for 10 years that you're not gonna change. So she's not coming yeah. back, right? That's a harsh yeah. reality. And uh, there's a really good book called Fair Play by Eve Rodsky. It will annoy you, it will piss you off, it sucks. And it's really amazing in the illumination phase, right? You can go through all six trust types and you can illuminate every single one, how it's broken and how it's restored, right? And I have that in my exercise. And how you can eliminate it. Like Eve Rodsky is a great way of illuminating what you were just talking about, which was what's the real split here? And the real split here for my household was 95-5. And I was thinking that bringing home the paycheck, big money, and like, you know, I don't know, maybe like helping her with the groceries or something, or helping her <laughs> make dinner. Like how, 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 um, how like arrogant of me to think that. And when I read Eve's book, I was like, oh my God, I've been so off. I'm not going to say wrong. I've been so non-serving of the relationship. No wonder the formula doesn't equal the relationship I want. I just eliminated that. What am I eliminating? Well, my excuses, my mindset of the, you know, or my belief patterns of like the, 
well, you know, I am putting the bank, I'm bringing the, you know, I'm putting the dinner on the table. Well, Eve makes it very clear. You're not putting the dinner on the table. You're putting a check in the bank that your wife then cashes, that she pays the credit card bills on, that she drives in the car that she maintains to the grocery store where she picks that up and pays for it, brings it home, unpacks it, puts it in the fridge, cooks it, cleans the dishes, and you're like, oh, yeah, it is 90, it is and, 95 and, and Ian, like in a lot of relationships now as well, <laughs> men aren't even bringing home the bacon. Our, yeah. our yeah. wives and partners are out earning us. And this is a trend that we've been seeing for years and years and years. But yeah. I've been starting to do a bit of an informal analysis within like my friendship groups and yeah. A, a good it's like a quite a high percentage now it's definitely it's, it's definitely in my in my uh, friends from london it's definitely 50 50 wives are out earning their husbands and oh. and wow and, and doing, doing the stuff. and doing the and leading childcare and and yeah. and cleaning the house and doing all this stuff so as yeah. as the guys we're in a this, this this tricky position and the stats now, as I'm sure you've seen coming up, women are dr dramatically outperforming men at school. Yeah. When we're trying to hire our interns and new staff, it is shocking the difference when we interview um, the females versus the males. Uh, we it was it was shocking. It was so shocking yeah. how much better prepared and better educated the female ac applicants were the majority of our male applicants. It's like very worrying, actually. It's, it's something. It's, 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 it's awesome, though. I mean, it's awesome, though. You know why it is? Because <laughs> when we went, I'm going to leave you with this because I got to jump on yeah. uh, to a class. Like when yeah. when we keep breaking the reliability trust, when we keep not creating spaces for our wives to be themselves in, and our wives have to step into the masculine energy more and more and more and drive and be decisive, they're like, the, the the reason why the the what you're saying like the female population is gaining in their um, um, I don't know what word you would use it's like dominance mm -hmm. you know in, the, in their dominance of like the traditional gender roles they're out the window that's all BS yet our brains are still kind of wired around these traditional gender roles and we're like yeah when your wife is making more money than you which take the money out when she's out pulling all a, a full day. And she's coming home and doing childcare and making meals and cleaning up and like taking care of your ass and telling you the next task you have to do. The moment, the moment that she hits the power zone that says green light, she's gone because she doesn't need you for shit anymore. And you're 100% replaceable. So one of the things I, 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 um, I coach my guys on is how to create space for their wives to be back in their feminine. Your wife doesn't want to run in the masculine and run stuff. She, just also, she, also, she also doesn't want to babysit you and give you a checklist. She wants you to step up as the other person in the house, as a 50-50 person in the house, and know what you need to do. I have, a, I have, a, um, I have an exercise that I, I, uh, I made called the Couples Planning Guide, Weekly Couples Planning Guide. And in it, it's a structure for you to sit down with your wife or your husband or whatever, your partner, and map your plan for the week so that you are now illuminated or aware of, oh, these are all the things that you do. I'm gonna take half of those and put them on me because making the money just isn't a justification of you doing nothing else anymore. And so I, I got that from Eve Rodsky's book. I, I really learned so much from that book, even though it really annoyed me. It annoyed me because I had to take action, right? It annoyed me because I had to go do something with it. But like now when we do our weekly planning and my wife says, these are the things that I have to do. I instantly step up and say, cool, I'm gonna take a bunch of those off your plate. Now, if my okay. wife doesn't say to me or communicate, this is what I need to do, then there is no getting mad at me. You have to share. Yet, I'm fully responsible. Remember, take it all on. Like, I'm fully responsible for opening that space up for her to be able to share with me what, everything that she needs from me. And so, the, the relationship grows from that point. Yet, if you're breaking every aspect of trust every single day and your wife is taking on 90% of the household duties, eventually, I'm telling you right now, guys, and some guys listening to this, are, they, they, they got left, right? The, the meter's growing, and at a certain point, the light turns green, and your wife goes, bro, I'm out. She was checked out five years ago. She's got no more connection with you. She's out. And guess what? She's going to find a guy that helps her get into her feminine. She'll never come back. So you got to be careful. Like, the timer's ticking for everybody. Unless you have a wife that's, like, completely complacent and just, you know, isn't happy but just is reserved to the fact that it'll never be any better and I'll just like guess I'm stuck with this guy maybe you'd be lucky but that's not what I want for my partner I want my partner to fully enjoy and experience her life from a pure 
irreplaceable place just like me. And that's my responsibility to create that in my household. And where can people find out more about you? Yeah, um, you can go to irreplaceableman.com and you can literally, like the link is to download my 12 step guide to becoming an irreplaceable husband. The one that I use from my journals, from my patterns, 12, 12 steps that I use to reignite my marriage and become an irreplaceable husband for my wife. Um, you can join our Facebook community, which is the Irreplaceable Man community on Facebook. 1,100 people in there. Um, all of our free exercises are all located in there. You can just click and download. Um, and then our podcast, the Irreplaceable Man podcast, if you are a member of our group, you get exclusive access to live podcast recordings every Monday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, where my wife and I are both on and we'll answer your questions before we jump and record. And then on Thursday, we do a live free training in the group based on the concepts we talk about on Monday. We dig in deeper on Thursday. You can come to that for free too. Like I'm about value, 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 man. Like you come into my world, you are gonna, your life's gonna get changed in some capacity. And, and I, I, I really like that. Amazing. And it's been yeah. such a pleasure having you on. I so appreciate Thanks, it. Um, love the work that you're doing and excited to Thanks, do more with you over the coming year. So I wanna say yeah, thank you. It. Really, really appreciate it. My pleasure, brother.